I'm uh, um, Oren Lyons. That's my English name. Jurat Grishmo is my clan name. Uh, the Wolf is my, my clan. Anadog is my nation. The Haudenosaunee is the Confederacy. And the Confederacy is better known as the Iroquois. We're old people. Been here a long time. So the first question, from your vantage point and from your people's vantage point, what is creation? Well, that's huge. It's huge like creation. Creation is the universe. Creation is everything that we can see and probably a whole lot that we can't, probably more that we can't see. But it's what's about us and it's the relationship, this amazing uh, web of life that we have here. And, and nature, which is part of creation, is more like the earth itself in its part, in its position in this whole web of life in the creation. We have relationships with uh, all the elements and forces of life, including the sun, we call our elder brother, the moon, we call our grandmother, the uh, winds, we call our grandfathers, the four directions, our grandfathers, and then all of the elements of life itself. So in this idea of creation, nature is the earth itself, and we call the earth mother, Itinoha, our mother, as we call all women Itinoha, mothers. And from mothers spring life, and we understand that. And we know that life springs from the earth, that generations that are looking up layer upon layer, waiting their time to come up and, and serve and be, is our responsibility. So the earth is, is female. Are, the earth is a fe is the mother, and so how are humans described? What kind of are, what kind of agents are? And well, then, if 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 you have uh, if you have a mother, then you have children. So we're children, we're children of the earth, and uh, we're tied to the earth. We come from the earth, and we go back to the earth, and and the earth has great systems of. Uh, regeneration, great cycles of regenerative life. And it's these cycles that we're all part of, just as the earth has seasons of life, all animals and all things that grow and fly, and, and including humans, have seasons of life as well. And so we, we grow in the same style. What's different about all of that is the time, the time that's allocated to the varieties of life that are on the earth. And we have a fairly long system of life, but not the longest. Turtles live beyond, beyond us. Parrots live beyond us. Um, there are certain mammals that, that are, have an older uh, life cycle than we do, but we have a long life cycle as it is on Earth. And then also, when you move down to the fine insects, then their life cycle is counted in days. So what you have is this variety and complexity of life and, and the times that are allocated and what happens during those times for each of these elements, that's what's important to understand. In the understanding of the earth, how does, what does, what are your recommendations for how we should treat the, how humans treat the world and the planet and our resources? What is the disposition that we need to take, humans? 
afford the gifts that the planet provides us? Well, well, what I've noticed and know about indigenous people around the earth is that many, many indigenous nations have have been able to uh, to hang on to the knowledge that they have, the traditional knowledge. Fortunately, I think for everybody, and uh, and in this traditional knowledge is the um, directions uh, are the instructions for a good life. So we have instructions about uh, how do we conduct ourselves on this earth, and probably the first one is uh, respect. And I think if there was a law, a common law around the world, uh, indigenous peoples, and I think everybody, respect is a law. And, and if people followed this law, simple law of respect, they'd have a lot more peace and you'd have a lot more uh, quiet and, and, and a better life. So I'd say respect, uh, conduct yourself accordingly and, and recognize what your obligations are and what your duties are. And the duties are to protect these life forms. When the peacemaker came to our territory about a thousand years ago, and brought this whole concept of peace as the original five nations, the Mohawks, the Oneidas, the Onondagas, the Cayugas, the Senecas, uh, were in a constant warfare. And we had really forgotten our instructions that we had prior to that and were not living by them. And Peacemaker came among us and, and brought this whole idea, concept of peace and democracy. And he gave it to us whole. And it took him a long time to do that. There's a whole story about how he came and how we worked with Hayan Winta, whom you call Hiawatha, and how they worked and brought together this great confederacy called the Haudenosaunee based on peace, based on equity, justice for people, and based on the power of the good minds the power of unity, the issues of health, all given to us a thousand years ago. And, and he laid out the process by which we, we do this. And, and one of the first things he said was he was going to give great responsibility to the women. Since the earth is female, then the women should be working with the earth. Men would be in charge of fire women would be in charge of water. And so we're, we're the, the men, our, our work to see to the welfare. We do counseling. We do meetings. We do all of that. And if needs be, we fight. Uh, but basically, we're, we're dedicated to peace. And that was what's, what's so important about that time a thousand years ago. When if you looked in, in Europe at that time, as great wars were going on, and the whole history of Europe, as I saw it, is one war after the other, century after century, how people lived in constant, constant fear, and thousands of thousands of people died. Well, in this part of the, the universe, which was kind of just uh, isolated, the Western Hemisphere wasn't even known about, we were operating under a different system. And it was basically one of respect and councils of, of leaders to try to keep the peace, because human nature is human nature. And you have to have a process by which to meet problems. And you have to have uh, rules and so forth. So the rules was always based around respect. And fundamental to all of that was, was the understanding of how the earth itself uh, was paramount to all of our life. And so in this uh, idea of respect was also the understanding of what we should do and how we should conduct ourselves according to the elements of the earth and all of the natural worlds. So we always said 
that we were, we have been told and understand that we're relatives. And where our white brother will talk about water and talk trees and animals and fish as resources, we talk about them as relatives. And that's a whole different perspective. If you think that they're relatives and you understand it and, and you understand that, then you're going to treat them differently. And the responsibility the peacemaker said to us was very clear. He planted a great tree of peace, a great white pine, a great symbol to our nations. He said, this is the great tree of peace. He said, its roots will be four white roots of truth that reach in the four directions of the earth. And those that have no, nowhere to go can follow the root back to its source and come under the protection of the great tree. And he says, on top of this tree, I place the eagle, and the eagle who will watch everything and watch and guard the security of this tree and will let us know when problems are coming. And he said that this tree of peace is a spiritual law. It represents a spiritual law. And the spiritual law is the law of nature. And he told us explicitly, never challenge this law because you cannot prevail. You will not prevail. Wrap your laws, your rules, and your conduct. He said, you, the leaders, when you're, when you're weak as a human being, he said, this tree will give you your spine strength. Wrap yourself around this tree because it's powerful. Do not challenge the laws of nature because you cannot, you will not prevail. Now that's great wisdom. That's a thousand years ago. And it reminded us uh, of, of our obligations. And so Indian nations in North America, South America, Central America, as far as I know, indigenous people around the world all have ceremonies. And these ceremonies are thanksgivings for what we have. Uh, we have just now initiated uh, a great ceremony for the trees at Onondaga and longhouses of the Six Nations, still operational. And we hold these ceremonies for the leader of the trees, which is the maple. The maple is the leader. And so we have a ceremony of thanksgiving as soon as the sap starts running. And then when the sap stops, then we'll have a closure ceremony. But in between, we're thankful for all trees of this earth, wherever they are, whatever their names are, those that we know and those that we don't, we give thanks. And so if this kind of instruction were given and understood by other people, then you wouldn't be cutting trees all over the world and destroying the infrastructure of life and everything that's in the woods. We had a a, a profound agreement when we first initiated the five nations, later become the six nations with the uh, Tuscarora Nation, came in 1713, 1722, became the six nation. But we all agreed. We all agreed that we would work together and be together. And so we had a treaty amongst ourselves, and it was called simply one dish, one spoon. That's a concept of sharing. And this world has to understand the importance of sharing. I know that in the structure of the United States, it's very contrary to that. People are not instructed to share. They're instructed to gain. They're instructed to hold to themselves. They're instructed to, to gather unto themselves. Uh, and they're rewarded for that. And so you have, a, you have an instruction that's contrary, very contrary to this whole concept, if indeed this is what you think is right. But this I'm simply telling you what our instructions are. And so operating under this, you know, I've traveled to Indian nations across North America and Central America, and I always I'm invited to the ceremonies, and I know what's going on. I may not understand the language, and the dances may be different, but I know 
what is being said. It's always the same. Thanksgiving to the creation. Thanksgiving to the, to the life-giving forces of the earth.